the DaVinci Resolve 20.2 release introduces dozens of updates to its already powerful post-production suite. This includes significant improvements to the timeline controls that will simplify and speed up editors' workflows, brand new effects to help filmmakers achieve even more cinematic results, and increased support for immersive workflows. Let's get started. In the Edit Pages Timeline panel, the track destination controls have been split into separate columns. The blue source track selector and the red destination auto selector. This allows for more intuitive patching of source media to the timeline video and audio tracks when editing. You may also assign a shortcut to the timeline menu's reset track destination command to quickly reconfigure the source patches to their default positions. In the tracker headers, the sync lock icon determines if a track will be affected by rippling actions on other tracks. This allows you to protect the content and sync of certain tracks like titles and voiceovers. All other operations, such as select, copy, and paste, are all controlled by the red auto selector button. This means you can choose to disable rippling while keeping auto select actions enabled. Ripple trimming has also been redesigned to prevent the unwanted overwriting of clips on the timeline and to better preserve sync during edit operations. Clips with the same trim positions will all be rippled without needing to be selected and longer clips will be cut to ensure perfect sync is maintained. This behavior can be disabled at any time by deselecting the sync lock in the track header. When working in dynamic trim mode, the viewer now automatically displays the dual screen trim editor, allowing you to intuitively adjust your cuts to the action in a scene. For better visibility, the trim editor will display in a single expanded viewer in the edit page. You may choose to disable this behavior in the user preferences, after which the trim editor will only display in the right viewer. When externally recorded audio is initially synced to camera rushes, its source will point towards the video file path, which can cause issues with sound turnovers. It is now possible to detach synced audio from the video on a timeline by going to Timeline, Audio, Detach Audio from Video. Select clips to detach individually or make no selection to impact the whole timeline. Clips will retain their sync and link to the video on the timeline, but their source path will now be the original audio recording. In the media, cut, edit, and fairlight pages, you can now instantly snap the playhead to your mouse by pressing the C key on your keyboard. Hold C and drag to skim the playhead in the timeline panel, the viewers, and transport bars. In the cut and edit pages, you now have the option to ripple delete silent time gaps across all tracks. To apply, select the clip in the timeline, go to the clip menu and choose audio operations, ripple delete silence. Use this feature to remove unwanted pauses from audio recordings and to quickly assemble a voiceover cut. The Curves editor in the timeline tray now features an action toolbar, allowing for the creation, navigation, and modification of keyframes and curve behaviors. You can shift click or alt option click on keyframe track controls to change the lock or display state for multiple parameter curves. Many other enhancements have been made to the keyframe and curve editors in the edit and cut pages. This includes improved easing behavior when working with multiple keyframes and the ability to see keyframes beyond clip edit points. There's also the option to use shortcuts for jumping between keyframe and curve views. Audio bus automation performed in the Fairlight page is now maintained when performing ripple deletes and other edit operations in the cut and edit pages. This keeps audio automation in sync with video edits. The multi-text tool has seen substantial improvements for more effortless motion graphic design and animation. These include support for character and paragraph level styling, and the ability to import CSV files as column-aligned text boxes. The cut and edit page viewers feature ruler guides that can be used to assist the placement of titles and graphics. To enable, go to the viewer guides menu and select rulers. Drag from the rulers around the viewer to introduce vertical and horizontal guides. Right-click a guide to more precisely enter its position value, change its color, or to lock it. You can toggle the visibility of rulers and guides in the Viewer Guides menu. When working with text generators, anchor points will automatically snap to guides when dragged. Title guides can also be enabled and modified in the Fusion page. Right-click in the viewer and choose Guides, Show Guides. Also in the Fusion page, there is now multi-layer support for the Renderer 3D tool. The Renderer 3D tool processes incoming signals using multiple lighting passes before outputting the final layer for compositing. Each pass leading up to the final result is now accessible for monitoring and refinement in the viewer. 
In the color page, the new AI cinematic haze effect creates instant ambience by incorporating fog-like atmospheric scattering into a scene based on depth. This produces a natural haze effect that scatters light and grows stronger with distance. A selection of parameters allows you to preview and refine the scene depth map and to control the ambient light, density, and halation of the haze. Light rays allows you to extend existing light sources into the fog, and air disturbance will break up the particle system for a smokier result. The color tone diffuser effect emulates the unique look achieved by professional photographers when using glass diffusion filters. By adjusting the color, diffusion intensity, and fall off, you can create the perfect mood for your subject no matter the lighting or environment. And the standalone split tone effect allows you to push two opposing hues into the highlights and shadows of your image to create cinematic looks. Toggle between natural and strong modes for different approaches to the split tone intensity, or choose custom to set your own strength and hues in the tonal ranges. In the color page, you can now navigate to a specific clip by number. In the playback menu, choose Go To, Clip Number. Type the desired clip number in the timecode field and press Enter. To save time, you can assign a keyboard shortcut to the action. You can also enter the number of the clip first and then run the command to instantly jump to the clip. This action works even when using timeline clip filters. You can now add custom fields to the metadata panel, which is available on most pages in DaVinci Resolve, shown here in the media page. Click the Options button and choose Create Custom Metadata to begin. Enter the field name and choose the data type in the drop-down menu. You can indicate if the custom field should appear in all projects created within the Active Library or only in the current project. To view existing custom metadata fields, go to the Group Filter options and select Custom. Return to the Options menu to Manage and Delete fields. It is now possible to include the current time and date when making custom burn-ins or render file names. Enter the percent sign to bring up the list of metadata variables. Type time or date and choose your preferred format. The data burn-in will continuously update the time and date in the viewer. And the name of the file rendered from the deliver page will feature the time of creation of the media file. DaVinci Resolve 20.2 has extended its support of file formats and codecs including support for ProRes RAW on Mac, Windows, and Linux. The Sony ARW stills image format is now also supported, allowing for editing and color work on Sony Alpha RAW images. The most recent release of DaVinci Resolve saw extended support for Apple Vision Pro spatial and immersive video workflows. This allows for the direct monitoring of content shot on the Blackmagic Ursa Cine Immersive Camera in the Edit, Fusion, and Color pages. In 20.2, support has been extended to immersive EXR workflows, allowing for proxies and VFX turnovers while retaining both I and ILPD metadata. We hope you find these additions to DaVinci Resolve 20.2 helpful. Thank you for watching.